Hello champions, welcome back. It's Big Dino Plays Kingdom Death. It's Lantern Year 13 for the people of Middleburg. And we're about to have a wonderful showdown against the hand. This one's going to be quick. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to uh, attempt to trigger this uh, new rule which is in play. Which is called... Uh, Suspicious. So, uh, rather than going through the rigmarole of setting up, um, I am just going to slightly change a couple of survivors we're taking along to the fight. Kimberly and Melvin are gone, uh, but all that means is I had to do some farming with them instead, of, with a couple of other people instead of them last Lantern Year, which is fine. Michiko is going to roll in in the first turn. We go first when we face the Seer, uh, the hand. So Michiko is going to try and trigger her um, serial code. So to get serial code, not serial code, at uh, Dark Eye, she's got to roll a perfect hit. So she's going to rock forward and attack. She rolls a seven and a four. She'll use her guardian rerolls to try and get both of those. And there's a lantern 10. So she's going to perfect hit. She's going two hits. And if we roll an eight plus, the hand has spotted her and is like, that's it, it's over. It's a four, so the hand has not spotted her. So we'll flip these two hit locations and we flip. This first strike, uh, Michiko has, actually we'll just, uh, we'll just depart so that everyone gets all their departing benefits. Great. Uh, so Michiko's total strength on this sort of silence is 11, and the hand is toughness. Uh, it's somewhere in here. There he is. He's toughness 14. So we need a 3 on this one. Oh. It's only one dice, we don't have sharp yet because we're not understanding five. That's a one, so that's a failure. The reflex triggers, she has to suffer one, two, three, so we'll spend one, two, three survival. Uh, and then this one, that's a critical. Gain an iron strange resource. I love that. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so Michiko is going to spend a survival to surge. And all of this stuff that I've got on the board is irrelevant at this point in time. See if she can roll a critical again. She rolls a six, which is a hit. It's not a perfect hit. She doesn't have any more re-rolls available. Uh... She rolls another crit. The attacker damages the monsters. Add an extra token to impossible eyes. Let me just read impossible eyes. So we've got two tokens so far and we've flipped all lenses to closed and she suffered one insanity. Uh, this plan is not working as I'd hoped, but I really love a free iron. so. Uh, so she's done. Now, Seb has no knowledges that he can trigger. August does, however, and she brought a fresh acanthus, which she's going to consume to gain a progress. Uh, no. No, she's not going to consume the fresh acanthus. She's going to make a... Fresh acanthus into a medicinal paste and see if we can roll an eight plus. That's a five, so we don't get that. Uh, she did not consume during the showdown. Uh, so the only person who can trigger this uh, 
his fingernail door. So Kimberly, uh, she is rocking around with the uh, fisty tooth. So she'll roll, can she roll a 10? Nope, she rolls a nine, which is one hit. She fails to wound, perform ghost step. She is not wearing any heavy gear. She suffers that. Unfortunately, the hand goes again. All the lenses are closed still. Uh, and so I'll just grab out his deck. Uh, yep. Uh, so this will be Michiko, so targets Ghost Step. Five speed on a two plus. Evasion five, needing sevens. One, two, three. Michiko will spend a survival to dodge. Uh, so that's two hits to the waist and the legs. One, two. One, two. That's the hand done. Michiko's going to swing. See if she can roll a critical. That's cocked. There is a perfect hit for Michiko. She gains a progress. It's one hit. Uh, we'll see if we roll an eight. We do not. We'll see if we can roll a wound. We roll a four, which is a wound. Cancels all reactions until the end of the turn. It's fun. Uh, so I think he's got his eyes open now. Closed, closed, closed. No. Still all open because of that reaction. Still all closed. A bit too much and goes momentarily blind. Michiko will surge. She rolls a perfect hit. She moves forward, dark eye on an eight plus with trigger. Suspicious. It's a two. She gets two hits again. Come on, Michiko. Uh, there is no lenses open. We cancel reactions for the rest of the turn. Uh, let's see if we can roll a critical on, or we get to choose which one afterwards, actually. That's another critical wound. The attacker gains a survival. <laughs> Add an extra token to eyes. We have done, we have done like five wounds on unseen eyes. Uh, the attack and roll may roll 1d10. Uh, nope, that's fine. If Michiko rolls one more critical hit, we automatically level up Dark Eye, and uh, that's the showdown over. Liver Blow, most green affinities. Guess what? It's actually Michiko again. 2 on a 2 plus. Both miss because she's evasion 5. Michiko is going to take one brain damage from jumping over. It's our turn. This is on top. Exotic fur collar. Michiko will go. Come on. There's a perfect hit. Boo! That is a showdown over. Uh, we automatically level up Dark Eye to level two. Boom. We advance the Dark Eye to. There's an accuracy and a systemic pressure. And a 9 or a 10 for a perfect hit. That is awesome. Um, that immediately triggers the end of the showdown because we have advanced the knowledge thanks to... Um, suspicious. All right. Suspicious. End of the showdown. We skip the aftermath and one random survivor is going to die. Let's randomise it using this little thing. Um... It's Michiko. Michiko is the random survivor who dies, except for the fact that Michiko has serial code. 
Serial code. If you would die, you inexplicably survive, suffer minus one permanent luck, and lose this knowledge. Uh, great. Good job, Michiko. So that's the end of that. And now, at the end of our campaign, we'll be facing the hand when he knows. He knows. Uh, this is the annoying thing about that showdown. Trying to trying to dodge the hand and flip around and do wounds and stuff is mad. And like try to avoid his eyes and stuff. That's so cool. But hmm. uh, okay, so I'm going to add an iron to our story. Uh, we took a fresh acanthus out. And then I am going to turn from the showdown and advance the year. <laughs> uh, so we skip the aftermath. So that means we gain no hunt XP. And uh, we do turn and advance the year. Uh, I think I might have said the showdown was victorious there. It's not. There is actually no victory or otherwise. Uh, okay, so let's rip over here and uh, sort ourselves one of these. We have a Gorm Climate, which is very annoying. And we will also flip two of these. Uh, that's pretty much awesome, right? Michiko being the randomised person. Uh, Alright, and we'll cut here, and we get a Dark Trader. Perfect. And, well, I'm definitely taking the Dark Trader. And we're not buying anything from the Dark Trader. You have no wares that interest me, my good man. Gorm Climate for the last time. Dark Trader. Gorm Climate for the last time. It's a 7 Plus two at home endeavors this year. Uh, that is all she wrote on that. Uh, we do gain endeavors. We are going to spend one for an innovate, and this innovate is very, very exciting. If we are successful here, uh, innovate, we have uh, one. Do I use my perfect resources? No, that's silly dinner. <laughs> Gorm, hide, uh, under the strange we have an organ, which is this preserved caustic dung, we're going to get plenty more of those to come out, and so we just need a single bone, dung beetle knights, elytria we're not going to use, horn we're not going to use, sentry fingernails we'll use. So that's our resources for this Innovate. Now, this one's super important. If we get Saga, we can start having babies. If we get uh, Korea, we can we can make one of the next things we need. So we definitely don't want Dreamless Language. We definitely don't want Settlement Watch. Come on, Dano. Character is a possibility. Scarification. Korea, Saga, Nightmare Training are the ones that we need and we didn't flip any of them. I do want character. <laughs> I don't think we're having babies this turn, so. We really need storytelling too. Storytelling next Lantern Year will be okay. So we're going to face the next Dung Beetle Knight. Uh, character has been added. It does not add anything to the deck. So we're done. Oh, actually, we don't want to spend that preserved caustic dung because we need to use it for subterranean agriculture to increase it by one. So we'll spend a different organ. Uh, what other organ do we have? We're not using Elytria, we're not using the Scarab Wing. Perfect organ, done. 
and then we'll spend the preserved caustic dung to increase our black harvest to a level three. Uh, boom, level three, done. Okay, character joins the deck. We still have six resources now. There's a possibility that we will, sorry, six endeavors. There's a possibility that we'll have a baby here because we've got matchmaker. We don't have any collective cognition this year, so perhaps we will not worry about it. Storage. Don't think we need to make anything. I'd really love to get Saga before we before we go crazy on having babies. Do we, or what's trepanning let us do? All right, Deno's gonna go trepanning. <laughs> he rolls a six, he clears it. He clears it at last. He's no longer unlucky. Yeah. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. All right. Uh, any other disorders we want to clear, actually? Trepanning is a, a way more reliable way of clearing disorders. Um, monster anatomy study. We don't, we're running short on organs, so I think we might just, uh, we might just do some trepanning. We'll try and clear hemophobia on Kaylin. That's a one. So I think she gains intracranial hemorrhage. We will try and clear that on her. We roll an eight, intracranial hemorrhage is cleared on a seven to nine, so she's done. She'll go again, so it's our third. She rolls a two, she suffers intracranial hemorrhage. She'll go again. She rolls a six, so she cures a disorder, and our last survival, she rolls a nine, she cures intracranial hemorrhage. Perfect. It's a wonderful turn of events. We do not have hemophobia. Uh, any more, which is good. All right, friends, uh, we are going to go hunt a level three Gorm. So I shall return and we shall actually take some survivors that are good into this showdown and uh, not worry about their deaths should that happen. So I will return very shortly. All right, friends, <clears throat> we're underway. The Gorm, the level three Gorm, look at him, the big fella. Uh, He's a champion. We are going to have to remember to do final march, which is exciting. Love final march. Uh, we don't have to do fetid grotto. And here we are. Uh, level two bone eaters could rock up. That's probably suboptimal for us if that was to happen, but if it is to happen, so be it. Now, uh, departing survivors uh, gain many, many survivals. There is only one dreamist, which is top. And we are underway. Whew. Okay, so we will go here. <coughs> now, I'll just make sure, uh, Toppy, you do gain insanity from that, don't you? Yes, great. Okay, so our goals in this showdown. By defeating a level three Gorm, you gain a stomach lining. Um, and eight Gorm resources. The stomach lining is needed for a piece on our green armor set. We'll also remove Gorm climate when we defeat the Gorm. Uh, we'll gain one hunt XP and a weapon proficiency. It's a wonderful, wonderful showdown. Uh, big fat Gormy Gorm. Uh, he is plus two speed. He is plus two damage and he's also a luck token, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but so be it. <clears throat> so let's have a look at our survivors. Uh, Deno, rocking the Fetosaurus and going to keep chasing that shield proficiency point. 
uh, wonderful. Layla, rocking fist and tooth. Uh, unfortunately, we have not remade the blood paint, which would, would have been nice, but it is okay. Top, blood drinker, leather set. And Melvin is, uh, is just being a scout uh, and doing nothing. And finally, we have one survivor, which is August. And she is doing a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> um, all she's going to do in this showdown is try and chase down little bits of resources or little herb grinder stuff. So <clears throat> let us move along um, to the first hunt event. And that will be August as the survivor who looks at us. Oh, it's over here. Itchy palms. Does any survivor have three plus understanding? I'm going to hazard a guess and say that we do. Uh, Deno has five. So we are able to skip that. Move the next hunt space. Boom. So we go straight into this, which is a random hunt event, and we roll 19. 19. Nineteen is exhalation of darkness. Uh, we have a straggler. Great. So we'll roll to see who our straggler is. So Melvin can go first. Melvin rolls a six. Um, Toppy has a one. He doesn't have have XP hunt added to it. Layla rolls a one, but she does have it. No. So Layla and Top are both uh, the stragglers. August, yeah. Layla and Top are both stragglers. Exhalation of darkness. Uh, great. So Toppers can go first. And he rolls a five, which is uh, something unseen attacks. You suffer one brain event damage and one random damage to your head. Hope you'll be okay. And uh, the other one rolls a three, which is exactly the same. One event damage to the hands, one insanity. Job done. The next one is another random hunt event and we flip sword in the stone. We will Nominate no survivors because we don't need it. Or oh, actually, is this an opportunity for us to clear Sword of Silence? Uh, Michiko's not on the hunt, so we can't do it. Uh, next one is another Gorm one, and we flip. Uh, so this is Survivor 1, 2, 3, 4. Mating fields. <coughs> uh... Any survivors may choose to investigate. Each that does gains a courage. Okay, someone has plus two to investigate roles, but are they in this hunt? Uh, Stalwart. No, no one has plus two to investigate roles. Uh, August will investigate because that is going to gain her a courage in the... And she will roll bold. So her bold roll is a nine. Try to do this to make my life easier. Instead, I'm forgetting it. A nine on the hunt phase is one permanent strength. Go, August. <coughs> Uh, great, and she is prepared. And now she will roll on this table. She rolls a 10, which is gain a random Gorm resource. <laughs> a handed skull. Did I just remember that Topless has megalophobia and can't go on this hunt? He does. Uh, so we will clear that instead of Kalen's um, thing. 
Uh, so Kaylin still has haemophobia because she was not coming on this hunt. I did that last uh, live showdown, last thing. Still got haemophobia. Unlucky. Now the question is, do we want to continue to investigate the mating fields? Does anyone else have a courage that they will gain a benefit from? Deno, one, 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 one. The downsides here are one event damage to the legs or one brain event. We will do, we will do Deno. Deno rolls a lantern 10, Shells. Deno gets a milky eye. Select a survivor to gain three insanity. I say you, Melvin. No, let's keep someone not insane. We're going to be able to tune right before the showdown. So, <coughs> one, two, three. Uh, Deno gains courage. Layla. Five, Layla suffers one brain event damage. Top has already got his maxed out on courage, but he'll search anyway. He gets a six, suffers one brain event damage. He is still currently rocking the immortal, which doesn't count. And the last person gains a courage and rolls a six. Actually, Melvin won't do it because he has no brain event damage. Mating field's over. Overwhelming darkness, we have Song of the Brave. Oh. Everyone rolls on Song of the Brave. Melvin, a Lantern 10. Did Melvin just gain leader? Maybe. <laughs> leader. Gained a leader fighting art. So Melvin, uh, Melvin will try and, Melvin try and learn leader. No, he'll just roll on the table. Uh, it's a nine. He gains a loomy. Uh, next person along is Top. He rolls a lantern ten. Top also gains the leader fighting art. He will roll on the table. He rolls a one. What an idiot. Um, that's the systemic pressure table thing. So he has to roll again. Uh, he rolls a seven, which I think is... Don't die. Don't die, Top. I'd really prefer it if you didn't die. <laughs> Voltless. Uh, death of subconsciousness. Lose all lifetime, once per lifetime rerolls. So he's actually better off doing that before he gets into there. Losing his lifetime reroll. And gaining a Lumi out of it. Perfect. Uh, Layla. She rolls an 8. So that is gain an accuracy token. I don't suffer one event damage to your arms. Deno. Rolls a 4. Uh, he gains an evasion token. But everyone else gains a survival. So uh, max, max, max. Melvin, gain a survival, and the last person is August, she suffers an accuracy token. That is the end of Overwhelming Darkness, and we are in good shape here, friends. Another basic, it's a random hunt event. 72, we're very close to the Tomb of Excellence there. Something to pass the time. We do have Symposium. And we do have Song of the Brave. La 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 la. We add plus four to our roll. It's a word game. A four goes to a seven. The event revealer loses one courage. That's unfortunate. Oh. Survivors play a simple but entertaining game. Six. Man, that is so annoying. Uh, one... Two, three, four, five, one. August loses a courage. She's already gained it. She doesn't get it again. <clears throat> uh, 
Our last random event is Baby and the Sword. We will roll a random hunt event. No one gets the sword. 68. A familiar face. So we roll uh, for stragglers. So August, she is not the straggler. Deno. Deno rolls a two. Deno could be the straggler here. He is not uh, prepared. So Deno's on a two. Layla is on a four. Top is on a seven. Melvin only can roll a one here. No, Deno's the straggler. <clears throat> Gain an understanding and reduce your insanity to zero. Don't love it, Deno. Don't love it, mate. <laughs> All right, Gormy Gormy. Sportsman's kill. All right. Uh, marvel at their skill. This is great. We don't get any benefit from this at all. It's a six. You can reroll a random hunt event. Done. All right. We are moving into the second last one here, which is going to be uh, herb gathering, mineral gathering, tuning, and then our last event. So uh, herb gathering is uh, going to go after mineral gathering. So I'll roll these out because I've definitely been doing some things wrong with this, I think. Let's whip out mineral gathering. All right, so here is mineral gathering. So our scout has a pickaxe. So the scout rolls a three, which is gaining insanity and hemophobia. Good on you, Melvin. Hemophobia and an insanity. Not what we wanted, but at least he didn't die. Pickaxe doesn't break. Uh, the herb gathering. So herb gathering, all survivors gain a survival. And then we roll on this chart. Roll three dice for each person. 17, so we're on 27 after our first roll. Uh, 27, 37, 46, 51. Do we want to keep rolling? No, we'll just gain two fresh acanthus. Boom, boom. And that is a good outcome for us. Some fresh acanthus, spoon boom. The last thing we need to do is do our tuning. And so everyone gets to gain insanity based on their number of blue or gain survival based on their number of green. August will gain insanity. One, two, three, four, five. Deno will gain insanity. He will gain one, two, three, four, five. Layla will gain insanity. She gains one, two, three, four, five. Top gains one, two, three, four. Melvin, no blue, so one, two, three. That is all of our events. So we flip our last Gorm event and we flip Flatter Earth. Ooh. Great. So Deno will roll. Uh, actually, we'll just. What is it? Each survivor? I oh, know. Just one. One roll. It's a nine. We just picked ourselves up a founding stone, and I am going to very wisely. Get rid of our 
sword so that we can start to gain uh, things. So we just picked up a founding stone and Deno is going to put that in his grid uh, and he's going to gain another founding stone. Very, very good. It's been a founding stone bonanza in this showdown, in this in this game, by the way. So we clear off the Sword of Silence. It is discarded, which means that we can now do White Secret. We will do White Secret on top. He has White Secret um, because he has Understanding 9. I did not prepare for this well enough. He does not have a Dry Decanthus, so he is going to gain... Um, Oh no, it's not him. Who is it? It has white secret. Let's go have a look at our survivors. Nine understanding. Jonas, how can you be understanding ten, my guy? Don't know how he got to understanding ten, but he gets white secret. And his name is Jonas. Bum, 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 he's carrying the wheel. Not sure if that is exactly the way that it's supposed to run. As soon as you lose the sword, if it's supposed to trigger. He suffers the lunacy brain trauma, um, which gains him a disorder, I think, and 1d5 insanity. So he gains an insanity. Uh, and a random disorder, we'll just shuffle it here. Squeamish, you cannot depart with any stinky gear. Probably not my favourite thing to flip on him, but Jonas will remember the story. He rolls a three, and that is the Ageless Man. So, um, he gains one accuracy and one strength, and he gains Ageless. One accuracy, one strength, and Ageless. That's a good trade for me in terms of <coughs> uh, squeamish for that. I'll take that. Potentially go fight a phoenix maybe. Why not? That is the end of the white secret for Jonas. Um, and that is the end of the showdown phase. We are tracking onto the Gorm. And so we will go final march. Boom, boom, boom. The Ancient Gorm's Bait. <clears throat> An Ancient Gorm's Bait would be the hunt. Oh, they're supposed to be removed. Okay, so we'll say it was top. And so... He gains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Can we skip to 1, 5, 1, 2. Okay, so Top's got to do two digested rolls. So the first digested roll is uh, a 1. Uh, your armor levels at a random hit location are reduced to 1. So Top is going to lose... All armor at his body, this is okay, because of Layla. Not Layla, August. She's got many fresh acanthus up her sleeve. She's ready to fresh acanthus her way to fame and fortune. And then his second one of these rolls is another one. Great. Waste. Uh, so he's got two bleeding tokens. He's got blood drinker. <laughs> Great outcome. Great outcome. Two ones. I love that. Okay. So the timid entrance. So everyone else has to make a timid entrance. So top's done. So August makes a timid entrance. And she rolls a two. 
Set your insanity to zero and gain megalophobia. Oh, insanity zero. That's bad. Megalophobia is also bad. Uh, Deno, timid entrance. He rolls an eight. Gain the lure epilepsy fighting art. He will choose not to gain that. And he gains a loomy. <laughs> Don't hate that situation. Layla. Layla rolls a 10. Gain a Gormite Strange Resource. That is amazing. Oh. And we need the Gormite for um, some of our gear. All right, and the last person is Melvin. Melvin rolls a seven. So Melvin is also going to not gain lure epilepsy. He gains a loomy instead. Okay. That's a tremendous turn of events. <clears throat> All right, and now the during the hunt phase, at the start of the showdown, each non-bait survivor in the ancient Gorm's bait is placed knocked down adjacent to the monster. So we'll place him knocked down over there. So let's snip over here. Uh, we do have to flip a random terrain, or is it two random terrain? Two random terrain cards set up normally. We already have the tall grass, we get a giant stone face, I don't think we brought the bow, so, and a survivor corpse. Survivor corpse is pretty good. Why can't a guy just get some pressure campus around here? Survivor corpse is set up at least six spaces from all other terrain. So that'll go there, one, two, three, four, five. Go there. Uh, we'll put top knockdown there. Our fifth and two champion. There. Deno. There. Out there. Okay, let's just review over here. So, this is the deck of action cards. It's toughness 15. He's got Final Mask, he's got Ancient Tusks, and he's got Gormyard. So, on Ancient Tusks, at the start of each monster turn, perform basic action. And it's Ancient Tusks instead. Uh, it's the closest threat in facing in range. So in that case, we won't put him there. Put him there. Deno is going to be our threat. Because he gets to choose who it will be. Uh, who's actually our most evasion? I should look at that rather. Deno, top. It's August like anti evasion for. All right, I really should have brought some of our evasion tanks, really. But... Hmm. That's alright. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. Anything else I need to do? No. That's all. Okay. So, uh, we will apply arrival bonuses. We're underway. So Deno's our target. He's going to dash, spending two survival. Into the tall grass, boom. And Gormy's gonna move 
to here. So, is 5 speed, 2 plus goes to 4 plus goes to 6 plus. Uh, Deno will surge to block twice with Fetosaurus. Uh, and so that is a 9, a 10, and a 6. The 6 is a hit, unfortunately, but we will spend a survival to dodge. And that has no damage triggered. So that is Ancient Tusks done. We then flip the first AI card and we get Ancient Indigestion. Oh my god. Awesome. That's the Gorm done. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good start. He doesn't retch at the end of his turn. Which is good. Blech. Okay, so we will spend a survival on Layla to fist bump top to stand up. Top stands up. Deno is going to stand right where he is. And does he punch with the Fetosaurus? Sure, he needs to get his wound off. Uh, actually, we might save it for later. He should be fine. Deno's just going to have his block, put up two blocks on Fetosaurus and stand right where he is. So he's done. Uh, no, we won't do Layla. We'll do um, August. So August is going to activate the Survivor Corpse. She gets to add plus two to this roll because of her... Screaming Coat, so she gains a 5 on the Survivor Corpse, which is gain 2 Insanity and a random basic resource. <laughs> and if we get Saga, it's on like Donkey Kong. Uh, and then she'll move, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, she will dash, she doesn't need to do, no, she will do this, dash, dash, one, two, three, four, five, to there, and she will then spend a survival to surge, and with that surge, <coughs> she will activate her fresher canvas medicinal paste, so we will trash one of our fresher canvas, and we will heal Uh, fully heal two hit locations and top will fully heal body I gotta tell ya that fucking herb grinder with a satchel just bringing that along to every fight that feels amazing absolutely amazing We'll upgrade to Herb Grinder 3. And that is all hit locations. Incredible. Good work, Layla. Now, she may consume a consumable resource. We don't have a vermin, so we can't consume that. Um... So that is August done, and she has also dashed and surged. We're yet to do a wound, but that's okay, because we're about to make up for that right now. Our scout will go, hmm. What's the scout? What's your tough, your strength, Melvin? Strength two, six. So you need nines to wound. Um... Hmm. I think we'll try this. One, two, to dash. One, two, three. One, two, three. We don't need to do this, but... Uh, 
think we will. Two hits. Ah. Uh, so Melvin has the dagger. Grindor, six. Yeah. All right, so he needs a nine on one of these. We'll potentially Guardian reroll here to try and get into a crit. So come on down. You can do it, mate. Four's not a wound. So we'll ignore that one. And we'll try and wound this one. I'm not sure if I needed to roll into this or not really. I'm not sure I need the resources at this point, but that's a nine. That's a wound. Uh, it's not a luck. It's not, oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll take a wound. Sure. Um, surge to get out of there. No, stay safe for the moment. So Melvin's done. Melvin also dashed. Okay, top. One, two, three. We'll swing with the blood drinker. Seven and a three. Top does not have any. Oh, we actually get to see what's on top first. Uh, top doesn't have any accuracy, does he? No. Great. Didn't roll any of them. He's got axe specialization, so he can attempt a wound. He's got plus, uh, he's got strength a million, so uh, unless he rolls into a crit, he can't roll into a crit, but that's a wound. Uh, the blood drinker is actually strength 8, 14 at the moment. It's now down to 11. Turn the Gorm to face the opposite board edge and move full forward in a straight line. Knowing that is the card, we're going to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Done. Layla, one, two, three, four, five. And Layla will put up a block. Uh, that's a wound. What is on top? It is the Mammoth Maw. Okay, so top has gained an axe proficiency point. Melvin is not wielding a dagger. Is wielding a dagger. Layla has not attacked yet. Deno has not attacked yet. August is not attacking. That's the end of our turn. And so we flip, uh, sorry, we do basic action first. And so the basic action is the closest threat in face in range is August. Uh, she's going to spend a survival to dash. Layla, I should say. Uh, does she gain that back from the rawhide set? She does not. <coughs> So she'll go one, two, three, four, five. So Gorm will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then he will do a more arm toss. It's a random threat in range and a random survivor in range. There's no jaw paralysis in play. So the random threat in range, let's have a look. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's Toppy. So he's going to spend a survival to surge, or dash rather. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Top's just going to dash to there. That's it. <clears throat> All right, Scout is getting the hell out of there. Going first this turn. Uh, we have dashed with Layla. We have dashed with Top. So Melvin, one, two, three, one, two, three. He dashed to get into the stone face and stay safe. out of there. Uh, a wound will be a vomit at this point, a vomit zone. So Toppy will actually go 
there. Deno cannot crit unless he rolls a 10, but he wounds in a 2 plus. So I think we will do Deno at this point. 1, 2, 3, 4 to there. Deno will swing with the Fetosaurus. What do we critical? Jaw paralysis. Yeah, Deno will uh, sling the Founding Stone to automatically do a critical wound. And jaw paralysis is in play, which is good. No, that card's there. Hit location on top of the deck is a failure one. Cool. Deno's then going to surge. Uh, Fetosaurus, two speed, five plus, a perfect hit. Uh, he's got nothing for a perfect hit. He's got uh, he's got death token, so he's actually hitting on a four plus. Uh, so that two is still not a hit. He does have an accuracy. He does have a strength. And he does have an evasion. Ah, uh, that's actually helpful because it means he didn't have to dodge before. Uh, from his death tokens. Uh, great. So it's just this one. It's a failure for the wretch, so he should be fine. He rolls a two. Uh, he is strength 16 on the Fetosaurus, so that's a wound, so we do not do the failure reaction. Done. What do we got on top? The death blow. We don't really want the death blow. Um, it'll only take a minute. So I think August is just going to get the hell out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Uh, Layla, one, two, three, four, five, with fist and tooth. Okay, so she has monster claw. She has plus one speed. So she's accuracy hitting on sixes. Uh, Gained a strength token from departing. What else you get a strength token for? Oh yeah, um, for Quixotic. So, great. So, Layla hits twice. It's the death blow, which she can't do anything about. And this, which she can do a critical. Uh, so let's do that. That's a two, so that's not a wound. Uh, this is a bad plan actually, Deno. She's only critting on a 10. No, she's critting on a 9. Uh, we'll keep a we'll keep a re-roll in play for this because she literally can only crit on a 9. I definitely should have done top here because this one we have to roll a 9. Hey, we'll just roll a 10. That'll be fine. The Gorm gains a minus 1 movement token. That is a savage wound because of her monster claw style. There is Mammoth Testes. Yeah, here we go. That'll be the go. Uh, and minus one movement is pretty good. Uh, she had to crit on a nine there because of Deadly. Um, do we surge with Layla? Uh, mammoth Hunting gain plus two strength and attempting to wound this location. It'll take it to a nine, which means she's still critting on a nine. Uh, I think we'll go top actually. Uh, so he will take his turn. We will move one, two, three, four, five into there. Actually, he's going to go into the front. He's going to be a brave mofo. An eight and a ten, that's a perfect hit. Toppy, you got anything for perfect hits, buddy? Got Guardian. Ah, he's got Fingernail Door. So he loses that and gains an insanity. So it's one hit. So we hit this location. And we attempt a wound. That's a six. It's a wound. We lose a bleeding token. And that goes away. The mammoth testes. What is on top? It's a mammoth clubber with the wound. Wretch wound. Very good. Uh, top will spend a surge to put up a block <coughs> on his round leather shield. 
And I think we will now spend a survival to surge with Layla and that will be our last action of the turn. Come on, Layla. Three speed, fist and tooth, two hits. It's this and it's not the trap, awesome. Okay, so this is perfect because uh, she can only critical on this for her wounds. So um, if she rolls a nine, it's a crit. If she doesn't roll a nine, it's not a wound, so there's no wretch. So that's a one. Okay. It's not worth re-rolling for Guardian, I don't think. That's a seven, that's no wound. Okay, that's our turnover. Perfect Mammoth Distended Gut. Uh, done. All right, start a turn. Uh, Toppy is going to get attacked by the Ancient Gorm's basic action. It is five speed. Hitting on a two plus. Which goes to uh, five plus, which goes to seven plus. I don't know why I rolled them there. <laughs> uh, it's only one hit, so that's blocked. So that's the end of the Ancient Tusks. <laughs> why did I roll them on? <laughs> On the green screen. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then he draws his AI card and he flips. Eat and run. A random threat in facing in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so she is just in range. <clears throat> so on a one to five, it's her. And it's not, it's toppy. Okay, that's a shame. Uh, it's going to grab... Mm, we're probably okay with this happening. Four speed hitting on sevens. Do we surge and put up a block? Yeah, surge and put up a block. Uh, so that was a good decision. We block that, we dodge that, and there's no after damage grab triggers happening. Toppy will go. He will swing the axe. He hits twice. One, two. He's got super dense and the mammoth distended guts. Toppy cannot crit, so a one is a failure. Uh, do we? No. Uh, this one is a six plus his uh, 14. Oh, I've got to remember he's got leprosy. <clears throat> uh, so he can reroll the failed wound attempt thanks to Axe Specialist. Seven is a wound. So, what's on top of the hit location deck? It's a mammoth tail. Uh, Deno will swing with the Fetosaurus. Deno hits twice. He's in the flank. Oh, yes. Uh, Deno, two plus. That's a wound. Deno, two plus. That's a wound. There's no failures. There's nothing else. Deno will then move. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. He's there. Uh, surely we've got a trap on top. Oh, my God. Spongy leg bone. <coughs> um, do we try for monster claw style? Yep. I think we do. So Deno's done. Top's done. And he spent his surge. Layla. Two hits. Ooh, this is a huge flip. Don't be the trap. Oh, yes. Oh, this is actually perfect outcomes. So we're going to try and roll a nine here to crit this. This could be worth a lifetime re-roll. So that's a one, and not a lifetime re-roll. I mean a um, systemic pressure re-roll on top. Yep. So we'll attempt to re-roll this. Come on. Ah, oh, it's another one. 
That sucks. All right, so fail to win that. Critical, nine. That's three ones in a row. Do we, do we worry about that? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She will go to here. That's everyone's turn. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's our turn done. So we do the Ancient Tusks. The closest threatened field of view is either Layla or Toppy. We're going to do Layla. She's going to spend, not Layla, August, I should say. Spend two survival. Come on, Dino. She will dash one, two, three, four, five. And he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then he'll flip his AI card, which is body check a random survivor in range. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine, it's toppy. Uh, we will stay and take this, I think. So he's gonna move to there. The speed of the attack is three, it's hitting on sevens. Seven, seven, one, block, knocks one, we'll dodge the seven. No other effects. Uh, dodge, dash. Okay, things are going well. There is a strong possibility we're going to see the trap shortly. He's going to move to here and wants to claw it up. She hits once, which is perfect. We trigger this. We don't really love a basic action, but if we can roll a nine, oh my god, we're still not on a trap. There's only three cards left. Is this re-roll worthy if we, if we, I mean, critical here gets us two wounds. So it's a five. I think we will spend the uh, the guardian re-roll. It's a worthwhile cause, Deno. What could be better than a worthwhile cause, Layla? You're wonderful. One, two, three, four. Toppy's gonna swing with the ax. Come on, bud. He gets one hit, that is outstanding. Uh, let's see if he can wound. Rolls a six, he gets to use Axe for Specialist. He rolls an eight, that's a wound. Job done. Trap, surely. Oh my God, the trap is bottom decked. I've had a few top decks this campaign, so I'll take that. August done. Uh, Layla is going to spend a survival to surge. She only hits once. <laughs> All right. She's not attacking from the flank. She needs a crit on the nine. That's a four. She won't. Is any rerolls? We have the trap. We know it's coming, so let's go and have a read of the lure paroxysm. Full move the gorm toward the attacker. If the monster ends movement adjacent with the attacker, the dorm headbutts them. Turn the monster to face the most survivors. Okay. Toppy will spend the survival to surge. He needs to roll six, one six, five and an eight. He draws the trap. Uh, the Gorm is going to turn to face him and he suffers two brain damage to the head. Sorry, two damage to the head. 
thanks to monster level, but he suffers one damage because of leprosy to the head. And then everyone in the monsters facing, which is just top and Deno, suffer brain damage, which would normally be three, but it goes down to two thanks to the Fetosaurus. Lovely. Uh, everyone has surged, everyone has dashed. <clears throat> That's the end of our turn. So we will do an immediate dash on top. To go one, two, three, four, five into the grass. It cost him two survival to do that. The Gormy will, do we surge as well? Probably not. The Gormy will move to here. And he will swing <coughs> with his five speed basic action. Hitting on a seven, two hits. Uh, so top is gonna suffer damage six to the hands in the hands. So he will dodge one of those. And then Nice. Uh, that four damage, which goes up to six, goes down to five to the hands. One, two, three, four, five. He suffers bleed one, which is actually what I want because it gets extra stuff. And uh, knock back 10 and bash. He's immune to bash. So it's just knock back 10. He's a long way away. His turn, this turn is just going to be to move five. One, two, three. It's going to be to move to there. He's a long way away, so it's not going to be him. AI card is rampaging the closest threat in facing in range. It's Deno. Ooh. Cool. Move and attack target. Target suffers bash. Um, at this point, Deno, do you just take that? In the face, put up a block with Fetosaurus. Then I will surge and block with Fetosaurus. And I think he will dash to be out of range because there's a basic action coming. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'll go one, two. He's gonna go to there. He's gonna go to there actually. And so that rampage goes on top of the deck and then basic action triggers, so he's gonna move in, do the basic action. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Deno has evasion three, so this is hitting on fives. Uh, two hits, which is blocked by Fetosaurus. There is no after damage effects. That is the end of our turn, or end of his turn, rather. So Deno just needs to do one wound with the shield to clear off rampaging, which is definitely something we wanna do. So he will do that by moving one, two, three, four, five into the flank. Swing twice. Five and a ten. Perfect hit for Deno. Anything for that, buddy? Uh, Bloodlust, eh? Oh well. I forgot to do that. Critical. Uh, Deno does have a luck. Uh, we probably would have done this one first. Uh, and then this one, it's a two, it's still a wound. So two wounds and a jiggling lard. Uh, oh, I need to upgrade fingernail door while I'm at it. Dreams last. For so long. Okay. So two wounds. One, two. Uh, 
Top's going to move. What's on top of the deck here? Yeah. Into the into the rear. He's going to swing with the Blood Drinker. He rolls one nine. That's a hit. He is plus three strength on this. He rolls a nine. So that is a wound. So Deno has done... Oh yeah, to do that, Toppy has to dash. Then uh, I surged and has dashed. Done. Uh, Layla is going to dash. Swing with Monster Claw. One hit, which gets the Gorm's flank. Needs to wound. Rolls a one. Uh, do we have a Guardian reroll here? Let's check. He's used two. August does not have a Guardian reroll. August is going to consume something. What do you got? Monster Grease, maybe? Yeah. She'll consume a Monster Grease to gain a Strength token. do have a surge available to me. We aren't going to take it. The Gorm has four wounds left. At this point, uh, we will do the Gorm's turn. And he's going to pick a closest thread in field of view. He'll pick Deno. Deno hasn't suffered a hit yet. Uh, Deno is going to surge before that happens with his last survival. All right, so Deno surges, perfect hit, and a four is not a hit. So he gains this, and he rolls a six, which is a wound on the Fetosaurus. So that's that trigger. What's on top here? There is a wound. So top will probably swing with a... Uh, he doesn't have a surge. Uh, yeah, we'll actually swing a surge with Monster Claw on Layla. Uh, she hits no times. That's unfortunate. So the monster does... Oh, he does his basic action. He turns to face Deno. He hits on 5+, uh, plus with this many speed. Could be bad, buddy. Oh, three hits. One, two, three. Body, boot, head. Body. Oh, it's not Layla. Here it is. Deno. Body. Boot. Head. Six damage is punishing. Uh, Knockback ten, bash, and bleed one. Uh, so Deno's out of the fight. The monster draws his AI card. Beat and a run. A random threat in facing. There isn't one. A closest threat in field of view. So top is going to spend... No, he hasn't got a survival. Everyone's done everything they can. So uh, we'll target Layla. And she will dash. Back into the grass. He's going to swing like this. He's got four speed on Layla. 
He hits once. Layla will spend her last survival to dodge. That is all that happens there. Toppy will move forward, swing twice in the rear. A perfect hit in a five. As long as this isn't the trap. It's not the trap. But he can't perform a crit here. Oh, no. Because uh, he doesn't have a luck. So he's only doing a maximum of one wound. Oh, well. That's a, a wound. Uh, and then he will perform Wretch. Uh, Layla has already surged. So Layla is about to get Wretched on. Uh, I would have been better off in the flank there, wouldn't I? Uh, it's fine once. He's knocked down, it's flung backwards. Wretch happens. She suffers two damage to her body. And she is knocked down. Uh, and that is it. Uh, she will get fist bumped by August to stand up. And she just needs to critical this. One, two, three, four, five. Doesn't get her there. Uh, this is a huge roll. Let's see if she can crit on a one, two of... Got two chances to flip a crit. <sighs> Critical wound. Savage. Two wounds. We are defeating the level three Gorm. It was a bit of a mission, actually. We ended up with no fucking survival on several people, so... Um, but that's okay. There is a good news story at the end of this. Fist and tooth proficiency, shield proficiency, and axe proficiency. We shall return from the showdown. We shall gain one hunt XP. We get a pondering of gourmandism and lanternism. Mandism and Lanternism. Uh, we have three Collective Cognition and we are going to gain the sum total of uh, 11 Gorm resources because we killed with the Scavenger Kit and uh, Ancient Indigestion is in play. No, 12. 12 Gorm resources. And four basic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> uh, four basic. And the stomach lining. One, two, three, four. And the stomach lining, strange resource. What a tremendous turn of events. That was a very challenging showdown. There is the stomach lining. Uh, we may have we may have gone just a, a smidge early there, but we did it on our timeline. We have wondrous design, and we do not have Gorm climate any longer. We can finally say goodbye to that shit lord. <laughs> All right, we get a heat wave. I'm probably not taking heat wave. Glossolalia. Uh, we don't need to do any science endeavors. So we're probably okay with that one. So we'll just do glossolalia, I think. Again. And the same person is going to do it. Not a story event, don't I? It's a settlement event. Uh, the Endless Babbler. Oh, he rolls a nine. Gains two understanding and father of words. Good on you, Seb. Okay, that is the end of 
the settlement phase settlement events. And we now have wondrous design. And I know what this is now, which is very fun. And I know what we're trying to achieve out of this as well. And here it is, a wondrous design, you say. Um, we gain the innovation dream schematics. And a few eager survivors comprehend. So we will draw, roll a dice, a six. Nominate two survivors to each gain stone architect. Okay. Two survivors to gain Stone Architect will be uh, August will be one of them. She'll clear off plausibility to gain Stone Architect. And won't be Layla, won't be Top, won't be, yeah, Kaylin. Yep, we'll do Kaylin. Should get rid of Blood Dancer. Make sure that's an architect. So we have to do our knowledge cards. We don't have to, but I'm going to. That was a good showdown. Um, so we flip out four of these. So we flip Light Whisperer, Guardian, Osteophage, and High Roller. Nice. We will be buying a lot of those, I think. <laughs> okay, let's pause for a moment while I check things. I shall return in a moment. Okay, settlement phase. Uh, we do have to do dream schematics. We'll roll the dream. Seb's going to roll the dream. And he rolls a lantern 10. Good work, Seb. So the dream project gains two and he gains a loomy as well. Okay, we're going to enter our resources and this is going to be a lot of fun. Leveled up those three, we're adding those three got all of these resources to play with. A jiggling lard. Uh, a gormite, is that in here? No, that's a strange resource. Pressure campus is a strange. A milky eye. A handed skull. Stomach lining. Monster hide, monster hide, monster hide. Dense bone. Mammoth Hand, Gorn Brain, Jiggling Lard, Stout Hide, Acid Gland, Stone Heart, Stout Kidney, Meaty Rib, Stout Heart, Meaty Rib, and a Mammoth Hand. That's our Gorm resources. What a haul. Our 
our basics, we get a love juice, we get a monster hide, we get a question marks, and another monster hide and a monster organ. Done. And then our strange resources, we get a stomach lining, a gormite, and a fresh acanthus. Gormite, fresh acanthus, and the stomach lining. Okay, let's do our pondering for lantanism. So Deno is pondering lantanism three. Cool, Deno could get immolated here. That seems fun. <laughs> Deno, lantanism, Deno gets immolated. <laughs> Hands of heat, lantern branding. Choose any result. Uh, no, will, will, will he roll that with his lifetime reroll? Come on, Deno. A lantern 10. He gains the secret fighting art red fist. So he'll take a torment and he will use his lifetime reroll. And he will gain the secret fighting art, Red Fist. Awesome. And we did not update the death count this Lantern year, so we do not gain a death token next time we depart. Lanternism 3. Uh, August is our Gormandist. And she leveled up to 2. She gains a Lumi, and she rolls a 1. No, she does not accept that. She rolls an 8. She gains Juggernaut. I'm using these lifetime rerolls now because I know that we are about to flip into some Mad Dog survivors, so we don't need these champions as much. Oh my god, that looks awesome. Juggernaut. Herb Grinder. Juggernaut. Okay. I would have preferred that, but that's okay. Juggernaut goes in there. Okay, so that's our knowledges that leveled up. So Fingernail door is into level two. Herb grinder is into level three. And these are the ones we have available to purchase. Let's do our most important flip of this entire campaign. We either need storytelling or saga. Uh, bone, hide, organ. Shrine is good, but not one we want. Storytelling. All right, well, cooking is not going to happen. Nightmare training. Oh, I think we've got to take storytelling so we can get the old master. We're, we're absolutely facing the um, Dung Beetle Knight this Lantern year, so I feel storytelling is the right approach. It means we have to hold on to our saga. So War Room gets added. It's a storytelling consequence. Records gets added. It's a storytelling consequence. 
and that is it. Um, all right, well, Saga has to hold for a little bit longer. Um, we are going to gain the next uh, Gorm um, thing. Okay, so storytelling. I, I think storytelling is the best one, and Rubido we will gain. So Rubido we gain by trashing a strange resource, which will be the Acanthus and the Gorm Brain. Done. So we will gain a Rubido. And storytelling. Storytelling. Okay, well, it's a level two Dung Beetle Knight for us to face. Uh, we can probably hold fire on our situation. Let's, on our... Um, Lantern Year 15, yep. So, this will hopefully get us... Uh, this will hopefully get us enough resources. Oh, I completely forgot Deno's got that uh, antelope mask. Oh, he couldn't trigger it. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> Green armor. Green armor. Okay, so. We don't have that Elytria. The calcified juggernaut blade appears in two years time. So we have the Gormite and the Stomach Lining and the Rubido and the Survive with True Blade. So in two Lantern years, we gain Griswoldo. Um, Flower Knight Badge, Calcified Greaves is still a long way away. We don't have Forbidden Dance yet. So Trinitas, Left Claw, Iron Leather, Scarab Shell, we have those. So we'll be able to make the Green Plate very soon. Skell, Beetlehorn, and DBK Aaron Badge. We will be able to. Um, we will be able to gain that. Uh, we need Old Master on the Settlements Quarry list, so we will not be able to gain that for a little while. So the next one on our list we are looking for is actually probably the Griswoldo. Sharp, Deadly, and Savage. What a beautiful sword! Um, okay. <laughs> we'll do some trepanning, I think, to clear off some resources. Let's clear off some endeavors. Uh, we gained Axe Mastery, thanks to Top. Uh, let's spend an organ to get Layla a once per... Thing in fist and tooth, see if we can get fist and tooth mastery a bit quicker. Uh, endeavor. And now the question we have to oh, we do have forbidden dance. See what we can craft, if there's anything we can craft that we need, that we want. We've already got a scavenger kit. Could craft a beacon shield, I suppose. I really need some more iron for that. Don't need any bone. Don't need any gorm stuff. Uh, don't need any of those pieces. So, uh, green armor. I think we have everything we need for this. The green helm, we need the skull. The green plate, we need the left claw. Griswoldo, we need the juggernaut blade. 
the folds, we need a lantern luminous cell and another gormite. And the green boots, we need the calcified greaves. So if we, so we definitely need to face another gorm. No, we don't. We can do it on the, um, we can gain gormite on this. Yes, that's what we do. So we spend uh, on the gorm chemist. Our marrowist is also going to try and level up osteophage too. So where's some bones? Uh, all right, so acid gland is an organ and stout kidney is an organ. So we're going to archive both of those. We're going to roll on this. The osteophage, we're going to go one-handed skull, one dense bone, one meaty rib, which is three bones. And I think we need a fourth bone, which is a mammoth hand. And we will level up osteophage to osteophage three. One, two, three, four. Bang. Marrowism is proving to be absolutely tremendous. I actually think marrowism could be close to my favourite one so far. <laughs> osteophage three is replaced there. And so now we get to depart with no armor and no shield and add six to all hit locations on Layla, which frees up our gear grid massively. Massively, I say. And we can still, of course, use the Dung Beetle Knight uh, badge, which gives plus one to all hit locations because it's not armor or a shield, uh, which is great. And... Yeah, we've got the dung beetle rolling gear. <laughs> How far off is our high roller for Qatar? It's Jonas, isn't it? His name is Jonas. Um, oh, I'd really love another verminist. Okay, um, so we've done our endeavour for the Gorm Chemist roll. We've spent the organs. So we get to roll five dice here. And we need to try and get 37. Because we've given it a crack. 7 and 7 is 14. 20. 26. 31. We get a life elixir. It's not what I wanted, but it's okay. So we probably have another crack, don't we? Two more organs. Jiggling lard. We need to get 37. Uh, that's not close. That's going to be a steadfast potion, I think. 8, 15, 18, 22, 23. Yep, steadfast potion. Come on, Dino, get it together, mate. <laughs> Steadfast potion. Quite interesting indeed. Quite interesting indeed, actually, with the Fetosaurus. Uh, we'll try that once more. Organ Milky Heart. 
down to one end of the left, looking for a 37, 37, ooh, okay, nine and nine is 18, plus five is 23, plus seven is 30, so if we archive our potion, one of our potions, probably the life elixir, and we roll a seven plus, we get a Gormite. Um, we definitely do that. We archive the life elixir, I think, and try and get a seven plus here. This could potentially be a lifetime reroll as well. Lantern 10. Okay. Gear. Gorm chemist. Lose the life elixir. Uh, resources. Gain a strange Gormite. We needed a second Gormite. That means now we don't have to hunt another Gorm at all. Unless we flip Gorm Climate. Because we needed Gormite and Gormite. Stomach lining. That's it. Everything's come together in this. Everything's come together beautifully. Uh, that's it. Um, I am going to spend some Lumi on some survivors and, uh, and we'll set us up for the next Lantern year. We're just going to hold off till Saga now, I think, friends. So uh, we fight the Dung Beetle Knight this year. We hopefully innovate Saga um, and we're all good to go. So, friends, it's been a pleasure. See you on the next Lantern year. Big dinner. Out. <laughs>